G'day, here you going? Hey, Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel today. <laughs> today I'm gonna do something quite different. I'm gonna paint a background, and this background's gonna come in handy for something you might find later on down the track, okay? <laughs> Got some sizes going up there on the canvas, in centimeters and inches. Just put my gloves on as well. And I'll also get some colors going up the screen there. And that way you can write them down and know what you're going to use when you paint along with me, all right? And also, yeah, so like I said, it's going to be a background. And um, sometimes you might find a picture on a free website. Let's say it's a person or an object or a flower or an animal, and it needs a background. Well, that's what this background's going to be for. And I'm doing this background because I have something coming up after this again to put in front of this background, but it's too big of a project to do as one video, okay? So I'm gonna break it up. So today is a background, all right? So get on over here, make sure you got some hydrated drinks, coffee, water, whatever, and um, let's get into it, all right? So I found this picture on the internet, it's a free website, and it's just a sky, water, and some sand front. That's exactly what I want for the background, okay? now. I'm gonna mix it up, change it up a bit, so it's not gonna look exactly like that, but it's given me the colors that I can use that are gonna to work to get that look. So I've masked up my horizon line. My horizon line is a little bit above half, not too much, because I need the sky, the water, and the shore, okay? So you need them up. And uh, if the sky was down here, what I'm gonna put in front of it won't make sense. I want the horizon line where I've got it there. Now I've just got my flow white with some retarder in here, and this is gonna allow the sky to happen. Okay, I just wanna crisscross this down to the tape there. Now why I've got the tape there, I don't want any unnecessary retarded paint underneath unless I want to put it there. So I don't know what's going to be there yet. So at least this way I'm controlling what's going on my canvas. So just get that nicely brushed out of there now. And we can make our sky any way you want, any way you want. Okay, I've wiped my brush. Next paint to use off the palette is my Cerulean Blue. I've got a little bit of quinacridone magenta there. Some of you know what I'm going to do with that. And we don't want a sky ever too dark blue. I want it kind of lighter blue. So I'm just lightly pushing this onto that white. And that white's allowing this to move across this canvas very easily. It's a toothed canvas. If I never had that white there and just grabbed the blue, it'll be very dark, dry, chalky and draggy. And to a beginner can be quite frustrating, wondering why your sky doesn't look like everyone else's sky. So I'm just getting it on, now I'm pushing it around. That's what all this crisscrossing is doing. Pushing it around, see there's an area there. I'm gonna come and push it into that area. These are just basic fundamentals of getting paint onto a surface. And then you get your brush strokes out. Nice and easy like that. That's a beautiful, light blue sky and what you can do pick up some more white I know I normally like to do this if I'm going for a realistic type of sky just get the bottom a lot more lighter subtle baby blue but lighter and if anything that's a bit darker up there it gives you that sphere look. Okay, I've wiped my brush. I'm going to pull my magenta along the palette like that. And I just want a teensy bit in there. Okay, I put bugger all on there, but there's enough there to create the element I want in the sky, which is pretty much that. That's the element. Okay, it's there, but I don't want it in a long line. Okay, I can wipe the excess off here. You crisscross this to make it wider because we pretty much want this, that'll do. Beautiful, beautiful. Now we'll just push it across. Get it up there a little bit more. And what I've done, 
I've put that magenta on there, but it's not just a line now, it's swollen in this area, which is good. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is create some clouds. If I'm going to have some storm colour, I've got some grey there, but I've got titanium white out of the tube, and I like to use a fan brush to stamp the paint on for my clouds. So I've got a larger one and a smaller one for yumminess. I'll explain the yumminess later for those people who are new to my channel. So I get the titanium white out of the tube. It's not this flow white, it's a better quality paint. And I'm going to get that onto my brush and pretty much work out where you want some clouds. So I might want something down the horizon line here. So I'm, I'm stamping it on, just stamping it on. Probably about there, that'll do. Grab a blending brush. Always have something to wipe your blending brush as you go. Now I've got that stamped on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the corner of this brush here. I like to use a flat, broad two inch one from the hardware. See how flat that surface is? It's not bulgy, convexed out or anything like that. It's flat and it's stability. It has stability. Now I'm going to get the corner of that and see the top of this I've just stamped on. Watch how easy this is. You first stamp it on and manipulate the top of that cloud the way you want, pulling it around, getting some nice air in it. Wipe it as you go, otherwise you're going to keep getting paint all over the place. It's important to wipe it as you go. So you pretty much control the top of that cloud the way you want, like that. Wipe it. And because this is on the horizon, I like to bring them down to nothing, right down to the atmosphere there, okay? They don't need any bottoms or bums on them, okay? And it's gonna pick up the colors there and create shadows and all sorts of flavors within that cloud. There we go. That was that easy. Might put something over here, so. I'm coming up a bit. I've stamped pretty much the shape that I'm looking for. Grabbing my brush again. Right, this is a low one, so there's no bum. I'm controlling the top, getting it the way I want, nice and soft. Yeah, 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 it's all happening. Talk to yourself, and that's what creating your art's all about. I've done it. The top, the top's done. Now I want to bring that bottom down to the atmosphere, turn it into atmosphere, and bring it down to the horizon. Sorry, there we go. Beautiful. Now let's put something higher above our head with a bottom on it. The difference between that, you don't do these sort of clouds up there, in my opinion, I don't like doing that. And see the top of this cloud and the bottom of the next one's gonna create a gap and depth within your sky as well. So we're pretty much gonna come across here. You're gonna stamp it on, just make some sort of billowy cloud wherever it's going. That's it, all right? Now it looks pretty heavy. Now you give this a bum. So we're going to give it a bum. So keep that blended tight, if anything, from the bottom upwards, from the bottom upwards from that bum. Now wipe your brush. You've done that. Now watch what this flat brush does. This blue undercoat's all wet. It's got retarder in it, staying wet longer. When I put this on, I'm creating turmoil. Look at that. And that's putting all different whites and blues within that cloud. That's what you want. You don't want to blend it to one tone. I better stop leaning on the camera caddy, otherwise it's going to be shaky. All right, so I'm just creating turmoil there. Turmoil, it's up into nothing there. Now this one is a totally different cloud. It's up in the sky over our head. That's all I'll do for the sky. I don't want to overdo it. Now that cloud, we can put some weather in it. So down here I've got that mid-tone grey, and this will tone the cloud up a bit. It just puts a bit of weather with it. Now it's, it's not a bad looking cloud, but it's very one-dimensional and it's very flat. So let's give it some boldness. So mainly along the bottom, we've got the weather there, up here a bit, and duvelating all the way through the body of it, somewhere there like that. All right. Now blend this within the cloud as well. Tap nice and soft. Now if you haven't done clouds like this before, it pays to practice your art. 
and we want to get this gray nicely bodied within that cloud there leaving bits of white in between it but let it blur into that body not not killing too much of the under white that you put on there because then you can turn it into a a muddy looking cloud it doesn't matter if you have some bright and darker values hang on i'll just grab a smaller blending brush just to make it easier of the gray because that gray we've got some darker and lighter areas of it the way we've blended it so that's it there pretty much it that'll do all right now we finish it off with the yumminess the yumminess is what's going to give it that three-dimensional look so i'm picking up some more titanium white nothing else just the titanium white there's your cloud now we want to put the yumminess in there so i want a bit of brightness there through through there a bit up the top there that's it okay grab your blending brush and something to keep wiping the build up now you want to sit that yumminess down but leaving the vibrancy there hang on let me get this bit out the camera's way there first you're blending this back down into the gray and the white but you're leaving that the luster of it there i think that's the word you call luster the brightness of it see and this i, I call this yumminess but this to me puts the, the third dimension within your cloud makes it look like it's popping off the page and you can see that's not a bad looking cloud for a beginner to learn practice study and conquer and achieve okay i'm just looking i might put something linear right in here these things sort of create depth within your painting something in there I'll give it some kind of a blend there we go okay I'll pull this tape off and then we'll get the bottom half ready so now I know I can take me time and get the bottom half ready now I want the water to come to about here okay so I'll take that up so as I don't get any oh no I can leave that I can leave that I can leave it and we want the the wash the white wash about here coming over to here so if anything i'm coming that way from there i'm coming down a bit lower here but this can stay pretty much out there where i want it all right so that's going to be me actual water the whitewash and the shoreline here so now you can set your palette up again. I've got some more of the um, flowing white to prime up the bottom area because this is going to have some beautiful merging blending colours. You want them to look like that oil-like. You don't want them to look dry and powdery. And we've got more titanium white. I've got phalo blue. It's a different blue than the cerulean blue. And some turquoise. Now first I'll get this right against the edge there. Now this horizon line doesn't have to be very sharp in, in focus. It's a ways back, so it can be a little bit blurry. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting that mapped into there. Beautiful. Now I can go for it and start blocking it in with this because this is going to help your watercolours merge together. You try it one day. Get a raw canvas and just paint in the raw colors it can be a bit difficult all the way down here get it on there push it in crisscross it and then stroke it across left to right you 
Yay, that's it. Now I've just wiped the brush. I haven't bothered cleaning it. Why didn't I clean it? Because I'm still mixing it up there with the white that's on there. So that's fine. Now we're going to use the, uh, the phalo blue to get our band of dark colours. So we've pretty much got some out here right against this edge again. Want it reasonably strong out there. There we go. And where's that other line? There it is there. So I'm just done two bands there of the phalo blue. We're not pretty much using much of the phalo blue, but there we go. Now I will clean that brush and add some um, turquoise to it. Okay, so I'm getting the turquoise. I'll get this on the brush. Let's put a bit of white in there just to see how it's looking. Yeah, it's gonna look nice. So now we're going to get this in the middle there. Pick up some more and just underneath here as well. Okay, now we'll get a bit more darker in there. Here we go, there we go. Now it, it, it's looking a bit uneven at the moment, that's fine. Wipe this brush. I'm just wiping it off on a rag just so as we've got I'll rub it up there, get it all primed, ready to go. Now we want to pull this water through. And that's why I put the white and the retarder there, because it's allowed it to stay wet longer so I can do this, okay? Now go straight. They're a bit too neat there, so I'm going to get some downward motions just to tease them together. There we go. Beautiful, I'm liking that, I'm liking that. Different kind of ocean. Now we can put a darker bit right about, am I still going? Uh, I want a darker bit of phalo blue. Just looking at the reference there, just something really dark here. There we go. That's some kind of wave trying to happen. And we'll just, yeah, beautiful. I've got a softer fan brush, something I can get a straight line within that water before it dries, okay? So I'll get this on the tip of my fan brush and I just want some, let's say something maybe here. There we go. That'll do. Wipe that brush that we had before rubbing it and just gently pull that across as well. Beautiful. That's still wet. It's still got movement in it. All right, I'm just getting some of the very light value of that turquoise. I'll even lighten it up a bit more. Just to put for the darkness under the whitewash. So there's my line for the whitewash. I want this just lightly underneath it. So I'll do this. Okay, that's done. We've got some depth there, so when we put the white on, it's just not going to be stark white. It's going to have some depth to it. Now, before we put that on, I want to get the sand colour on. Okay, my sand colour, I want to get some more of this white. I've got some white and I've got yellow ochre. Okay, let's start mixing that with the white. I'm going to leave just a little bit to one side in case I need some depth. Get some more of this white over here. And this will just be the sand colour I choose to use. 
see I've left some darker values there. Don't have it too white. Bring some of that one back into it. See, I'm allowing myself to control the mix. So I'm pulling this back into it. Pulling it back into it. I'm getting a bit happy with that. I'm very happy with that. I'll start at the bottom where there's no contamination because if I start there, I'm only going to bring blue down here and I don't want to do that. So we'll get this pushed on to the green, or to the turquoise, whatever. To there. Now before I do any blending and merging, I want to get a bit of the darker value just to add some interest to the foreground which is about here so I'll put this in okay I've just got it on there now we can pull this the way we want yes it's not just one bland flat color okay I'm going to wipe the brush just contaminate it with the lighter color again that I had and I want to just lightly kiss those two together just like that I'm not going to bring this way into there because that's going to have heavy white foam on it so you're not going to see that there we go okay I've got good old titanium white again now I've got another fan brush it's not a scratchy heavy one it's kind of a medium bristle now, I'm not sure if it's synthetic or hog bristle but it's not as scratchy as my hog bristle but I want this to control how I get the white over that area here so we still got some of this showing through so I pretty much want to if anything I'm coming along and up that way a little bit because where it's against that wave there you want it distinctly in front on our side I'm right off the page there. Uh, let's go over here a bit. So I'll work my way up to that area. There we go, working my way up. There we go. It's, this isn't a level line, it's sort of up and down over the place. Now we want to just scratch this in, leaving some of that turquoisey colour we mapped underneath for depth, okay? This is just a nice soft flat foam laying on there. It's not really agitated like a washing machine and gone crazy. It's sometimes you get that looking at the reference picture. That's pretty much what it is. Try and keep them nice. and um, evenly straight. I mean, they can be crooked, but even. You don't want them some right out of perspective and proportion with the painting and making it look like a five-year-old. We're coming down to here now, where it's hitting the sand. And now we'll just get a nice, in some areas, we'll just get a nice sharp edge, like say there somewhere. Load your brush up again. And get something maybe here a nice sharp edge at the bottom side this side not that side just so we got something to put a shadow on about here there we go i'll pull this up a bit now into the wave scrumble it in a bit and then put some more highlights here and there. Okay, grab yourself a script liner and the yellow oxide. Get some of that, uh, wet it, and then get it nicely toned into your brush like that, twist it into the tip. And we want to put a dark shadow under there. Now I'm gonna twist the brush, it'll create a fatter bit, which is what I want. Let it wiggle. There we go. Now we'll do some more. Just a little bit under here. I've got contact, now I'm twisting the brush. Now this 
here I'm going to go wider nicely under there bit of a shadow there twisting it wiggling it letting it fade away this bit here looks a bit deculated I'll try and fix that up practice this procedure as well if you want to put it in your paintings and you feel you're having trouble doing it it's something you need to practice and you can see just what it's done for your painting let's give this a little bit more here it can be broken up now that's a simple effective seascape background for any painting or we'll just whack a frame on it you'll see how the frame enhances a seascape with the white inner border of your frame that's not too shabby hey so we're going to use this background and put something in front of it now probably a girl at the beach something like that okay and just remember you can do that I had fun painting this today and I hope you enjoyed watching the video and learnt something new from it. Check out the links in the description below. Share, like and subscribe if it's your first time here. And thank you once again to my patrons who support my content. All my tutorial paintings are for sale. The links are below to sort that out, okay? And if you like what I'm doing, be sure to tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.